Welcome to This Week in Orthodoxy, the world's only online video newscast focused on events in the life of the Orthodox Church. I'm Metmi Luberis. These are some of the stories making headlines this week. The 50th anniversary of the Order of St. Andrew the Apostle, Holy Community of Mount Athos, the Holy Mountain, has become a thoroughfare. The Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America is co-sponsoring two events at this year's UN Commission on the Status of Women, and Orthodox Christians worldwide enter the Great Period of Lent. First up from New York, the Order of St. Andrew the Apostle of the Ecumenical Patriarchate celebrates its 50th anniversary. Organized in 1966 on behalf of His All Holiness Patriarch Athenagoras, His Eminence Archbishop Iacobos bestowed the various officia, or offices of the Ecumenical Patriarchate to 30 outstanding laymen of the Church selected because of their love, loyalty, and support of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese and the Ecumenical Patriarchate. The Ophikia for the Order of St. Andrew derive from some of the most prestigious offices of the ancient world. Originating in the ancient Greek city-states, the ancient order of archons is in fact the oldest and most prestigious honor that can be bestowed upon a layman in the entire Christian world. On the occasion of the 50th anniversary, archons take the opportunity to recommit themselves as defenders of the faith to the spiritual center of the world of orthodoxy, the ecumenical patriarchate, and recommit to fighting for religious freedom and the vitality of St. Andrew's See, notwithstanding the oppressive environment where it is located and where religious freedom does not exist in that entire part of the world. The order under the supervision of its historian will be publishing an official scholarly academic reference book on the Archon Ophikia, including their derivation and historical development due to be released during Archon Weekend in October of this year. And next up, today Holy Mount Athos has become a thoroughfare which anyone can enter and leave at any moment, reads a complaint written by representatives of the 20 Athenite monasteries. According to the Romfea Greek News Agency, the representatives of the 20 monasteries are sounding an alarm because of the lack of security on Mount Athos. The monk's letter is addressed to the civil governor of Mount Athos and the Greek Ministry for National Defense. The cause of the complaint was the shooting of a documentary by BBC Two British TV channel. In fact, the BBC Two film crew and their cameras and equipment sailed up to one of the Athenite monasteries in a boat at night. They could have asked for the proper permission and they would surely have been given this permission, the Holy Community notes. But a journalist with the support of local smugglers illegally entered the territory of Holy Mount Athos with the aim of creating a sensation which openly insults Mount Athos's inhabitants. The Holy Community's letter continues. However, the problem is not only the unpunished intrusion onto the territory, the letter's author stress, as the BBC documentary shows, anyone can secretly enter Holy Mount Athos and secretly leave it. Therefore, the relics and holy objects kept at Athenite monasteries could be exposed at any moment due to danger, due to the inaction of the authorities. Not only are the authorities refusing to restore order and to implement the resolution of the holy community of Mount Athos concerning Ephesermenu Monastery, they are even not concerned with applying the necessary sanctions following the notification of the BBC film, the letter reads. And next up, the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America is co-sponsoring two events at this year's UN Commission on the Status of Women. On March 15th, the first event took place at the chapel of the Church Center for the United Nations in New York, addressing how ISIL's exploitation of the current political and humanitarian instability in the Middle East has a negative impact on sustainable development in the region. The panel's primary focus was the effects of ISIL's actions on the local populations, specifically in terms of forced migration, human trafficking, and child soldiers. And on March 22nd, the topic will be Women, Water, and Well-Being, the human right to water and sanitation addressing the intersection of the human right to water and sanitation as well as water justice for women. The multifaceted nature of this vital resource and common good 
Essential for Life will be the focus for speakers of this event, in addition to perspectives from government, research, ethics, and practical humanitarian responses, along with the experiences and wisdom of women. The event will take place at the UN headquarters. For more information on registration, log on to GoArc.org. The Greek Orthodox Archdiocese has been actively working at the United Nations for 30 years, has general consultative status under the Economic Social Council of the UN, and is accredited through the United Nations Department of Public Information. To learn more about the work of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America at the UN, you can contact Father Nathaniel Simonidis at fathernathaniel at goark.org. And lastly, Orthodox Christians worldwide enter the great 40 days of Lent. For some, this period of time simply means a time to fast from certain foods. For others, it elicits many emotions and brings forth many questions. As OCN's Father John Parker writes in his sounding blog entry this month, the interior and exterior evangelism of Great Lent, for many, it is a time of introspection and repentance. He discusses the very first words of the great canon of St. Andrew that indicate, Where shall I begin to lament the deeds of my wretched life? What first fruit shall I offer, O Christ, for my present lamentation? And so it is with many of us who have a hard time focusing on what to do first. To help in your walk through this great time of self-reflection, visit the sounding blog on myocn.net daily to read entries on the meaning of Great Lent and how to make it truly meaningful to you this Paschal season. And in news from OCN, OCN brings you another way to share the beauty of orthodoxy with the world using Spark, the latest downloadable OCN app. An Orthodox Christian news portal, OCN Spark, provides information about events going on in the Orthodox Christian world and persecuted Christians everywhere. The app makes it easy to share news and articles with friends and allows you to make prayer requests for those who are suffering. Visit myocn.net to easily download OCN Spark from iTunes. And much like public radio and TV, the Orthodox Christian Network relies on support from its viewers, listeners, and myocn.net visitors like you. In honor of OCN's 20th anniversary, anonymous donors have issued a $20,000 matching challenge. For every dollar you give, $2 will be donated. Be a part of our growth and make a contribution today where your donation can be doubled for a limited time. And remember, you can access the many breaking stories, blogs, podcasts, and videos available on the latest topics of interest on myocn.net, on Facebook, or watch us on our YouTube OCN video channel. That brings another edition of This Week in Orthodoxy to a close. Wishing you a blessed Lenten season. For everyone here in our OCN studios, I'm Emmy Luveris. Let's go forth in peace.